All right, today I want to take a look at a particle which is going to move back and forth according to this polynomial equation. And in this problem, what I want to do is solve for the maximum position which this particle is going to reach in its motion. Now, it's a little bit hard to understand the motion of this particle just by looking at this equation alone. So the first thing I want to do here is graph the motion of this particle so we can get a better understanding of what's going on here. All right, so starting over here with the position versus time. Uh, we can see this position versus time function at a time of zero is in fact three. That is to say, if I was to plug in zero for t's here, I would come up with an initial position of three. And as time goes on, that position is gonna change. So to understand how the position is gonna change, what I wanna do is look at each term individually. So first let's actually go through and pretend that this minus t squared isn't here. Literally just, just cover this up. Now if this was to be simply 3 plus 2t for the position versus time, what we'd see is an initial position of 3 and then that would steadily increase like this. But there's a negative t squared here and mathematically really what this is doing is turning this whole function into a parabola or really a parabola that's upside down or concave down. So what's happening is this graph starts out moving along this line as though it's simply 3 plus 2t. But as time goes on, this is going to arc downward. Like this. Now there's two ways to solve for the maximum position which this particle is going to reach. And one is just using calculus and depending on some mathematical facts. What I want to do is look at this in terms of, of physical properties and the actual physics that's taking place here. So we know from physics there's a relationship between position and velocity. And that is that velocity is really just the instantaneous rate of change of position with respect to time. And really all that is to say is that if we were to take the derivative of a position versus time function with respect to time, we would now have velocity. So let's do exactly that. Taking the derivative of this function, we can just apply the power rule. So the derivative of three is zero, plus the derivative of two t with respect to t, that's two. And then lastly, we have this negative t squared. We're taking the derivative of that, so that's gonna leave us with negative two t. So now we have the velocity as a function of time. Or if I clean this up, it'll look like two minus two t. To graph that over here, we'll see this function, which really just tells us that the velocity starts positive, steadily decreases, and then becomes negative. It's important to realize that the velocity is zero right at this point when the particle goes from moving to the right or in the positive direction, having a positive velocity, to moving to the left, that is to say having a negative velocity. And so it's this point right here in time that is going to correlate to our maximum position or the farthest the particle ever gets to the right. So I'm gonna call this point in time right here the time of maximum position. And that's the same point in time that we see right here. So really all we're gonna do on this problem to solve for the maximum position is we're gonna figure out when the particle has a velocity of zero. So to do that, all we need to do is evaluate this equation to see when the velocity is zero. Setting zero equal to two minus two t. We can solve for t. Remember, that's gonna be the time of the maximum position. And our time of maximum position is going to be one second. Now, knowing the particle reaches its maximum position after one second, according to this equation, we can now take this time and plug it into our position versus time function. And we're left with a position at a time of one second is equal to four meters. That means the farthest this particle ever moves to the right is a position of four meters. Or on our graph, the highest this ever gets, this point right here, is at a height of four meters. Now one thing I want to point out is that in solving this problem, we took a look at the position 
as a function of time and the velocity as a function of time, and then we related those two together. And we realized that conceptually, the velocity had to be zero at its maximum position, or when it reaches its, its farthest point, it's gonna go over here to the right. And mathematically, we can relate this back to what you might see in a calculus class, because I want you to realize, all we did really was we took a function and we optimized that function, or we found its maximum value. And we did that by taking the derivative of the function and setting it equal to zero here, exactly like you would in math class. So this is how we go through and find the maximum or minimum position which a particle will reach when given its position as a function of time. And on that note, that's all for now.